Hello, my name is Katie Groves, and this is part 23 in my series about deprogramming from trauma-based mind control. If you've not done so already, I ask that you please watch the first two parts of this series, linked in the description below, for disclaimers and safety measures you can take while watching these videos. In this video, I am going to talk about Stockholm Syndrome and the mother bond. This is a heavy subject, but what I view as one of the most important aspects of healing from trauma-based mind control. So I do not take this subject lightly. I'll start by defining Stockholm Syndrome as I understand it. Stockholm Syndrome, also known as trauma bonding, is a phenomenon that occurs in people whose lives are threatened sufficiently that they believe on a primal level they are more likely to survive if they bond with the person threatening them in the way that they bonded with their mother or primary caregiver as infants. It is an incredibly powerful tool in brainwashing that perpetrators use by purposefully inducing this phenomenon and thereby gaining the victim's quote, undying loyalty and submission. People with Stockholm Syndrome tend to glorify, idolize, even worship their abusers, believe that they can do no wrong, and view them through the lens of a traumatized child, an infant, the way an infant would view their mother or primary caregiver as God. Stockholm Syndrome is not impossible to break. However, it requires knowledge, understanding, and empathy. Tremendous compassion for oneself. That is what I have found to be true for me. That without understanding that my behavior and actions uh, towards around and around my abusers is a result of a very serious regression a primal defense mechanism, that the ways I acted, the ways in which I acted around them that implied respect or even love, that implied, con that implied consent, were a result of a regression that was purposefully induced and manipulated in me from birth. That I in no way condoned the abuse that was being done to me because I developed Stockholm Syndrome, and that I can forgive myself for any ways in which I feel I participated in the abuse as a result of my programming in Stockholm Syndrome. I mentioned the mother bond as the second aspect of this video. And by that, I mean not just the bond with one's mother that one regresses to when they develop Stockholm Syndrome with a person other than their mother, but the bond formed with the mother that is then used to fuel the Stockholm Syndrome in racially abused people. I will speak from my experience for myself. I was forcibly trauma bonded with my mother. The bonding that I experienced with my mother as an infant was artificially induced by the programming and then manipulated and used as the foundation for all other Stockholm Syndrome relationships I had with members of the cult that my programmers understood Stockholm Syndrome enough to know how to bond me with my mother so that that bond could be reaccessed and reaccessed and reaccessed with other cult members, but also, most importantly, my mother herself. My mother was a member of the ritual abuse cult in which I was raised, and the degree to which she's culpable for her actions, perhaps only a higher power can say, but my mother was certainly used and certainly appeared to be an active participant in my abuse as a child. And the Stockholm Syndrome I developed with her was very special, specific, because of who she was. If Stockholm Syndrome is a regression to the bond one forms with one's primary caregiver, namely their mother, then imagine the bond that would be formed with a perpetrator who is also the person's primary caregiver from birth. It's unfathomable the level of bonding that takes place in this situation. 
in monarch mind control, when the mother is used as the person's primary abuser, that Stockholm bond, it's like a super bond. I regress back to the very bond I formed with her. I'm not projecting that bond onto her. I'm regressing to the actual bond that I formed with her. And so that makes her unbelievably powerful in the mind control. So breaking free from my mother, cutting ties with her, regardless to the degree that she was culpable, understanding the potency of this bond and understanding that above all else, I had to make sure I was no longer in contact with her was paramount for my escape and freedom. I found her to be the hardest person to cut ties with. I wanted overwhelmingly to believe that the lie of the Stockholm Syndrome was true, that my mother was a god, that my mother was deserving of my worship, that my mother was perfect, all-knowing, all-powerful. None of those things are true. She's not only a fallible human being, but one of the most damaged, sick people I have ever met, and absolutely not in a place to be worshipped or idolized as perfect or godlike. Letting go of that was extremely challenging for me, but I did a tremendous amount of deprogramming around her, and I have been free from contact with her for some time. This is one of my proudest achievements, although the word pride is difficult to use because all of this is so terrible. I don't get, I don't derive egoic pleasure from any of this. It is all extremely painful, but knowing that I am no longer in contact with the person who had the most hold and power over me helps me tremendously in feeling empowered, in feeling free, in knowing that I have done everything I can to keep myself safe from these types of abuse. In my next video, I'm going to share about the experience I had that enabled me to free myself from my mother and how I became aware of who she was and basically how my Stockholm bond with her shattered. Okay, that's all I have for this video. Please join me in the next one about that. Thank you.